Do you have a first generation Ryzen CPU and want to know how well it performs on the newer X470 platform? Or are you looking to buy a new 2000 series Ryzen chip, but you want to save a little bit of money and go for an older X370 motherboard, and you kind of want to know how that performs? Well, in this video, I'm covering both of those sides of effectively the same compatibility coin, where we're going to be taking a look at an 1800X on both X470 and X370, and the new 2700X on on the X470 platform as well as the X371 and then give you a bit of a comparison and a bit of a conclusion as to how they all perform. Now a little bit of background to this topic, uh, AMD has said that the AM4 socket which these chips all fit into is going to be around until either about 2020 or about uh, DDR5 kind of mass production where they're then going to have to change it up because of the RAM spec but uh, these chips and the likely next couple of generations of Ryzen CPUs under the Zen architecture are likely going to all still fit in these sockets and AMD has said that they, they're going to try their best at very least to make sure that all of these chips work in the older generation boards if they kind of need to. Now some features on some motherboards may not work with newer chips on older boards or vice versa and you also might find that some boards especially in the more budget tier categories or ones that didn't sell too well in their initial runs might not get BIOS updates for those future supported chips whereas the more high-end models likely still will but it's something to bear in mind and as motherboards get discontinued you may find that say 3000 series chips won't work on x370 purely because the motherboard vendors have stopped supporting them and giving them BIOS updates so it's just something to, to be aware of if you are planning on you know upgrading to Ryzen 3 or 4000 series chips while uh, still using the x370 board. Now the chips and boards that I'm using for my testing are the 1800X which is obviously the first generation Ryzen CPU and and a Gigabyte's Aorus X370 Gaming 5. I'm also actually not using this board, I'm using the Gaming 7 X470 board from Gigabyte's as well, just to kind of keep the two fairly similar. There's not going to be any extra things like the ASUS multi-core enhancements on or anything like that, um, and keep them sort of relatively similar. Uh, obviously Gaming 5 versus Gaming 7, but it's what I have available. Uh, and I'm using, as I said, the 2700X on the newer, uh, or for the newer chip available. In terms of the RAM that I'm testing with, I'm actually using the 3400MHz kit of G-Skill Sniper RAM that came with the new uh, 27 and 2600X chips in the sort of uh, press kit if you like. Um, what actually was surprised uh, surprised me most was that once I updated the BIOS on the X370 board, even with the X370 board and the 1800X, which previously had a lot of trouble supporting any more than about 2800 to 3000MHz RAM, supported the 3400 megahertz RAM with no problems. Set the XMP profile and it ran perfectly fine. I was really very impressed to see that. Now I ran my usual suite of benchmarks and I do have to clarify that this suite isn't necessarily comprehensive and that there will be plenty of other people doing a fairly similar topic to this one so make sure you check those out if you are planning on you know getting a new Ryzen chip with an older board or uh, you know moving your older chip to a newer board or anything like that. Make sure that you check those other sort of sources if you like and make sure that uh, for the specific board you're getting and the chips that you're getting that everything is properly interoperable and that everything will still work because I've heard a few reports of that not being the case so just make sure you do your research before you buy. So with all that out of the way let's jump into the performance results. So starting with the Cinebench numbers as you can see the 2700X takes a reasonable hit in terms of its multi-core performance when switching platforms whereas the 1800X really doesn't switch much and is probably within margin of error here so really uh, kind of surprising surprising if nothing else on the ASUS real bench scores again we're seeing a very similar trend where the 1800X is only marginally faster on the X470 platform whereas the 2700X is seeing a decent performance hit at least in a sort of marginal terms again very similar here the actual surprise here is that the 1800X is actually faster on the older X370 platform again within margin of error so take that with a bit of a grain of salt and in the game Gaming results, again, there's a lot of discrepancy here. The 1800X seemed to perform a little bit worse, in fact, a good bit worse on the X470 platform, but there are a lot of variables to take into account, especially with these sorts of gaming benchmark results versus the more easily repeatable uh, kind of, you know, th synthetic benchmark results. Uh, and again, looking at the Dirt Rally results, again, we're seeing slightly better performance on the uh, X470 platform for both, although the biggest difference is actually the 1800X here, so 
quite surprising. So as you saw with the 1800X, the, the uh, 1000, you know, first gen Ryzen chips, you're really not seeing too much of a difference when upgrading to an X470 board, at least in terms of straight up performance. You may get some extra features and you may just like the X470 board a little bit better. And obviously you're more likely to have more BIOS updates on that X470 board than you are with the X370 boards at this point. But obviously it, you're not gonna see a massive performance difference. But where you will notice a difference, at least a small one anyway, is with the new chips on the older boards. It's only a, a couple of percent difference, so you're really not gonna notice it, especially in gaming applications. But if you're really trying to get the best of the best out of your you know, CPU that you've paid a, a fair price for, then it probably pays dividends to actually go and get a newer board that fully supports it. And also you don't then run the slight risk of uh, buying an older board that hasn't been flashed and therefore you can't update the BIOS without getting a donor chip from AMD and all that sort of stuff. So uh, it just uh, it makes it a little bit simpler and you do get a slight bit more performance, especially in the more computationally heavy tasks. So what's the conclusion then? Well, if you've got an 1800X or if you're planning on buying a Ryzen CPU and you're not that impressed with the performance difference between the first and second gen chips and you want to save a little bit of money and go with something like a 1700X right now and you know get a pretty decent value for money, but you don't necessarily want to go with the X370 board because you may upgrade in the future and you want a little bit better bio support or you want some of the features that are on these boards, uh, then you're perfectly fine to do so. It works plenty fine. You're not going to see a massive performance improvements or really uh, much above margin of error, but it's still going to work perfectly fine and you should be able to use most, if not all, of the functionality on the boards. If you're buying a newer chip though and you want to save a couple of bucks and go for a cheaper motherboard in terms of X370 versus X470, then you can do that too. You can also go with B350 and save even more money and that will still work and likely you won't see any performance difference there either. You'll still be able to overclock just fine and again most of the features should work plenty fine for you so you really don't see too much of a difference there. You just save a little bit of money. Of course you will have the downsides of likely less BIOS updates in the future which could be important for those newer chips so you could end up waiting for the B450 uh, 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 motherboards um, which will uh, in theory give you a little bit better support but still able to you know you're still able to save a bit of money compared to the higher end X470 boards. But with all of that said I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you planning on picking up a new Ryzen chip or have you got an old one and you're looking for a new motherboard? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below and also your thoughts on AMD actually supporting their platform and keeping it you know fairly uh, performance similar at least in terms of the different chips and platforms. Uh, again I'd love to hear from you down below. But otherwise that is pretty much it. If you want to check out the new Ryzen chips or X470 motherboards I'll leave a couple links in the description down below it should take you to your local Amazon store where you can you know see pricing when and where you watch this. You can also check out the Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday and actually Saturday basis too and also you can check out the Patreon link if you want to support me directly. There's a subscription button just below there if you're new to the channel feel free to hit the bell icon for notifications for new videos there are some other videos over here for you to check out if you don't you know just watch through autoplay uh, and otherwise that's that's pretty much it thank you for watching if you've got any questions leave that in the comments down below and otherwise we'll see you all in the next video